Hey everyone, this is Zach, just a guy from Indiana, coming at you for episode 107, All Things Boxing. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, feel free to share this video, and remember, we've got you covered on everything revolved around the top 10 pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world and your mega fights. So as we close out, everything revolved around Jake Paul's TKO over Mike Perry. It's important to address where Jake has come from and where he is looking to go. Because the criticism around him has been the exact same since day one. And so my only hope is that from talking this through, we can at least get on the same page. Because the media is going to continue to feed you the exact same thing. And that's that Jake is not fighting real fighters. So let's go right into it. Jake Paul decides to go from being an influencer to being a full-time boxer. He gets called out by Nate Robinson in the NBA. And at that time, critics said there is no way a kid from Disney, a social media influencer, would ever beat an athlete. That was the term at the time, just an athlete. So he knocks out Nate Robinson. Then the criticism is he would never beat a real fighter. And that's when we insert Dana White. Jake Paul versus Ben Askren, who is a retired UFC fighter. Dana White says, I don't care if he's retired or not. I will bet a million dollars that Jake Paul would not beat Ben Askren. And Snoop Dogg came to Jake's rescue and said, yes, he will, and let's double that bet. So Jake Paul knocks out Ben Askren, Dana White was wrong, and Snoop Dogg is $2 million richer. Then everybody's complaining that Ben Askren wasn't in great shape, that he needs to fight somebody more relevant. So he fights Tyron Woodley, beats him twice, the second time completely knocking him out cold. It's a highlight reel. So then the criticism, again from Dana White, out of his own mouth, is there is no way Jake Paul would ever beat one of the greatest of all time in the UFC. He even brings out Anderson Silva's name himself, Dana White does. So Jake Paul makes an Anderson Silva fight happen. Knocks him down and beats him. Then the criticism was Anderson Silva was too old. So bring in Nate Diaz who is still, and I believe still, is active in the UFC. Jake Paul knocks him down and beats him. So then the media tries to go a different route with it. So he's beaten all these UFC fighters. And as they continue to say he needs to beat a real fighter, he needs to beat a real fighter, he needs to beat a real fighter, to the point where it's completely obnoxious, they then just change the wording. And they say Jake Paul needs to fight a real boxer. So now the narrative has changed a bit. We've gone from fighter to boxer. So what does Jake do? He fights two boxers, Andre August, Ryan Borland. Both had winning records, knockouts under their belt, were professional boxers, so you can say all you want about them being journeymen, cab drivers, all the different terms that were thrown out there. But Jake started his journey against real boxers, labeled professional, and knocks them both out. So, then the criticism is, he's not fighting good enough boxers. He's not fighting 
someone younger, someone who's constantly active. And in steps Mike Perry, who wanted to start boxing, who is the face of bare knuckle fighting. Also former UFC. So Mike Perry steps up to the plate and the media goes crazy. No chance Jake Paul can win. Mike Perry will destroy Jake Paul. It is the only thing you ever read and you ever heard from the media. And this past Saturday, Jake Paul, TKZO, Mike Perry. And even then, even after that win, they complain about Jake Paul putting on too much weight. Jake Paul still not fighting a real boxer. It is the same continued complaints. And unfortunately, it always will be. But I have an idea of which would bring a lot of us on the same page. First of all, you can't complain about Jake's weight. Cruiserweight division in boxing goes up to 200 pounds. So even if he hits the scale at 200 pounds on the dot, he has every right to eat and gain whatever he wants from way into the time of the fight. Everybody should know that. That is not on him. That is a good strategy. Now, Jake Paul has said he wants to be a world champion in the cruiserweight division within the next two years. So to shut a lot of the media up, I think the perfect play for him would be to challenge someone in the top 50 who is an active boxer in the cruiserweight division. Because in all the media and all the buildup can be revolved around his journey in the cruiserweight division chasing down a title. It could be a lot of fun. Let's say he beats somebody in the top 50, and next thing you know, his next fight is someone in the top 25. We could build that story around that. Maybe we do get to the top 10. Continue to build that story. This could be a fun route to go. And the cruiserweight division is a great one for him to be in because there's been lots of different, different title holders. Titles that have been vacant. I mean, it is a good one to go to if you're trying to get a title. But I, I think the way to appease as many fans and as much of the media as possible is to now focus completely around the cruiserweight division. Get him going in that division. Get him moving up the ranks. And if he gets himself all the way through into the top 15, top 10, all of the different organizations in boxing then have to take him seriously. The WBA, WBO, IBF, WBC. They would all have to start looking at Jake Paul as a contender. So that is the route I want to see him go. Because then we can channel all of our energy strictly to Jake Paul chasing down a world title in the cruiserweight division, starting with being against someone else in the top 50. There will always be complainers, doubters, criticism, and people that hate Jake Paul. But I do think this is the perfect plan to show the world of how he could get from where he is now to a title. So thank you so much for tuning in. This is the last video regarding Jake Paul, Mike Perry. We start again tomorrow with Terrence Crawford and Israel Madrimov for August 3rd. Feel free to subscribe. Be back tomorrow with a brand new episode. Have a great day.